Hey guys, it's Frank from Cruising with Wheels. Welcome back for another Tales from the High Seas. Now today I'm going to talk to you about my two-week Mediterranean cruise aboard the Costa Europa. It was a two-week cruise that I took with a couple of very close friends and it was, gosh, way before I even met Kevin. So let me tell you a little bit about what happened because a lot of people have been saying, gee, don't you have some um, nice positive stories? with a happy ending. I mean, those crazy, wacky, cuckoo stories you tell are really funny, but I'm sure there's got to be some nice, fun stories. Well, yes, there is. Now, back in 2005, somewhere around September, uh, a couple of my friends said that uh, they saw that we could get a really good deal on a two-week Mediterranean cruise. Um, and I thought, wow, you know, I'll never have an opportunity to get to Europe. So I kind of jumped on it, and it was a really, really good price. Um, kind of hard to remember a lot of the details because it was back in 2005, and we went in 2006. And, you know, my memory now is a little fuzzy uh, about what's happened prior in my life. So I had to kind of revert back to... Uh, going through my box of uh, photographs and pictures that were taken back then and kind of find out from friends about, you know, where we went and kind of what we did. Um, so I had to do a little research. But uh, my best friend um, was Kevin. Now, not Kevin, my husband, but Kevin, we'll call him Kevin number one because uh, he always refers to uh, my husband Kevin as the other Kevin number two. Um, and uh, uh, he uh, made all the arrangements. Now, I went with him and my friend Bill and our friend Tom. So the four of us uh, went on this cruise. And uh, Kevin made all the arrangements for me. He put uh, the cruise uh, fare on his credit card, the flights on his credit card. And, you know, I just, you know, whenever he got the bill, I had to make a payment, I wrote him a check. So uh, he took care of everything. I just gave him, you know, all my information that the cruise line needed, uh, and then he did all of that for me. So he was always great with that kind of stuff. Uh, and actually, what happened uh, with that information will be the subject of another part of this story later on, because it really was kind of crazy. But um, I then had to get a passport. Now, I didn't have a passport, because I really had never left the country. So um, I went to uh, uh, one of the drug stores and I had my passport picture taken and then I got the paperwork and I filled it all out and I sent everything with my birth certificate down to the, uh, uh, what is it, the Department of State Processing Center and I think it went down to, I don't know where it went, South Carolina, North Carolina. Anyways, so I sent it out. Now, I had just started a new job. I, at the time, was a store manager for Rite Aid for about five years. And I got recruited by CVS Pharmacy. And, um, you know, I hadn't planned on making a job change, but apparently the district manager from CVS was in my Rite Aid store and was very impressed by my store and, I guess, with myself, that um, he offered me a job. And... He kind of kept hounding me until I went to meet with him, and we had lunch. And um, as I said to him, I said, you know, I'm kind of happy where I am, and I'm not looking to make a change. I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm making so much money, and so any kind of change, I would want to make this amount of money. And he went, okay, fine, done. And I was like, okay. Well, you know, I have several weeks paid vacation because I've been with them for five years, so if I start with you, that's going to be a problem with earning vacation. And he went, fine, done, 
check, you've got it. And I'm kind of going down the list, and every time I said something, he said, fine, check, and done. And I was like, okay. Um, so we kind of went forward with the background checks and the drug testing and all of it. And within a week, everything came back, and um, they officially offered me the job. As it happened, the vice president of Rite Aid had left the company and was now the new vice president of CVS. So when the district manager told him, you know, this is who I'm recruiting, you know, he said, well, who is it? And they said, well, it's, you know, Frank so-and-so from this location. He said, oh, yeah, go, do it, get him. So I gave my notice. Uh, as it happened, it was at the time I was going to take a vacation. We went up to Cape Cod. Usually about six to ten of us friends would go to Provincetown in Cape Cod for about a week. So I did that, came back, and started in August of uh, 2005 with uh, CVS Pharmacy and started my training. Um, and then, of course, the whole Europe thing came up. And, oh, thank God I negotiated that paid vacation because I was going to need it. Um, as I was getting toward the end of my uh, training, uh, the vice president came and said, listen, I need you to go and take over a store in Buffalo, New York, which is about an hour and ten minutes away from Rochester. Uh, they fired the manager. Uh, we were going into, like, you know, October, November, holiday season. The store was a disaster. The back freight uh, warehouse room was loaded to the gills, nothing had been unpacked, the store was not ready for holiday. So they rushed me through to finish up my training and boom, got my car and every day I drove to Buffalo every morning and spent long hours, I spent 18 hour days driving there early in the morning, coming home late. Um, it's funny because that uh, uh, it was probably about now, that's a year now before I met my husband Kevin. Um, so I'm doing all of that and I get home one day and I pick up my mail and there's a letter in it from the Department of State for passport information. And I opened it and I'm like, well, what's this letter? Because it doesn't look like I got my passport in it. So I opened it and it says, passport denied. Loser! You're not getting your passport! And I read it and I was like, what do you mean I'm not getting my passport? And it said, reason? not a valid birth certificate. I was like, what? What are you talking about? I mean, I'm like, you know, at the time I was like, I don't know, 47, 48 years old. That's the only birth certificate I have ever had in my whole life. Got it from my mother. I mean, I don't know what they're talking about. Well, as it turns out, what I had is what they called a birth notice. And apparently back in the 50s, that's what they handed out, were these birth notices. Well, I didn't know. I mean, I've always used it for everything, schools, job, whatever. That was my birth certificate. Well, I was freaking out, because now it was like, you know, November-ish, and we were going in the following March. I needed to get my passport. So, I, it's early in the morning. I'm in my Buffalo store. I'm on my laptop. And I, I went to the New York State record site. So I got my credit card out. I paid the fee to request a copy from New York State of my birth certificate. Then I went on to Monroe County, uh, which is a county I live in, and went to their record site, paid the money, and requested a birth certificate from them. And I thought, all right, I've got two requests in. I don't care how much it costs. Whoever I get first... That's the one I'm going to send down. I can't remember who sent it first, but thankfully it, it you know, only took like maybe a week or so. Got one of them in the mail. I sent it back with the paperwork. I overnighted it to South Carolina or wherever it went and said, you know, I'm going out of the country at the end of March 2006. I need this passport. So within like, I think, two weeks, I got my passport in the mail. Oh my God, I was so excited. I thought, you know, monies have been paid. You know, the flights have been paid. The cruise has been paid. 
if I don't go, I am out all that money. So um, that was a little, you know, uh, clink in the armor, as they say, on getting my passport. Um, so um, I went through the holiday season, the Christmas season in Buffalo. Um, you know, I ended up, that, it's funny, that store, that store ended up being slated to close. Uh, they made the announcement after the holidays. And it's funny that uh, with me cleaning it up and uh, doing some training, that store, which was a disaster, ended up being number one store in the district. And then they announced it was going to close. So I went back uh, home to Rochester. I took over uh, one of the Rochester stores. That manager who was, whose store I took over uh, wanted to kind of get out of the store. They sent him to Buffalo to do the store closing because I did not want to stay there. I just, you know, this whole back and forth driving, you know, was just getting a little old. Um, so I went back and I took over his store and kind of had to do the same thing. You know, you always tweak the store. I wanted to get it run like the way I run a store. So now I had to prepare the store and the staff and remind my boss that, you know, I'm going on a two-week uh, European cruise, okay? So I need to make sure that all my ducks are in order. I have the proper staffing that's going to be able to open and close the store. And I need to get all the schedules written, done, and put to bed before I leave. So that was a job in itself. In fact, I think I had to borrow an assistant manager for a couple of days from another location. So we did that. And uh, at the end of uh, March, maybe March 26, 2006, me, uh, my friend Kevin, Bill, and Tom got on a plane, flew into JFK in New York, and then hopped aboard a big old plane and headed off to Rome, Italy. Yeah, it was a long-ass flight. You know, I don't do well on a plane for that long of a flight. Uh, and again, I had never done an international, so it was quite the experience for me. But we flew into Rome, and then we got onto a smaller plane, and we flew into Genoa. And we stayed in Genoa for the night at the uh, Best Western Hot Hotel Metropoly. Uh, and it was kind of cool because, you know, over in Europe, um, all the buildings are existing. So if you're a Best Western or a Marriott or uh, I don't know what you are, if you want to open up a, uh, a hotel or whatever in Europe, you go into an existing building. Okay, it's not like here in the United States. You know, a building's up for 10, 15 years. Nah, we're done. Tear it down. Build a new building. We don't, they don't do that over in Europe. You go into existing buildings pretty much. They're not, uh, you know, they don't tear stuff down. So it was in this old building, you know, with the little Best Western logo, Hotel Metropoli. And I think I got a picture of it. Uh, it was cool. I, I, I was so thrilled to be in Europe. And so we, uh, we roamed the, the city of Genoa, went on a little walking tour. We ate um, at this really nice uh, Italian restaurant. And then uh, went back and got a good night's sleep. And then the next day, we uh, boarded a train. Tom, uh, our friend, was fluent in Italian. So he did all the translations and got our train tickets. And, uh, and so uh, we boarded a train from Genoa to Savona. Now, the port of Savona is where the Costa Europa was sailing out of. So... Um, we got there, and I remember we were in the train station, and um, I think we, before we boarded the train, we were like, okay, uh, you know, if we have to go to the bathroom, we need to go now. So we decided we would do it in groups of twos, so that um, I think Kevin and Tom went to the bathroom first, and Bill and I stayed to watch the luggage, and then when they came back, Bill and I were going to go to the bathroom. And they were going to watch the luggage. So when Kevin and Tom come back, Tom looks at me and goes, oh, you're not going to like the bathrooms. And I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, now remember, we're in Italy. Okay, we're over in Europe. Bathrooms are very different. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Why? He goes, go to the bathroom. So I go to the bathroom, 
And I walk and I'm like, holy crap. And basically, you know, I, I have to pee. And so you go up there and it's like this, this white um, porcelain foot plate where your feet just, you know, position them on the plate and there's a hole in the floor that you pee in. There's no urinals or toilets. I mean, this, this, you know, you pee in the hole in the floor. So I come back and I'm like, oh, Madonna, you weren't kidding about the bathrooms. So we board the train, we get to Savona, I think it was like an hour train ride, and we get to the port, and we kind of, it was like a couple of hours uh, before we were about to board the ship. So we kind of, with our luggage, kind of were tooling around a bit, but didn't go far, uh, took some pictures. Uh, I think I got a picture of us in front of where the ship was in port. Um, and then we, um, we uh, went to the terminal and did all the paperwork and then boarded the ship. And there's a really cool picture of us, uh, the four of us, you know, as we're getting on, on the ship. Um, and uh, it's funny because uh, I think out of the, uh, all the uh, guests on the ship, there was just uh, like, like, I think there was like five uh, Americans were four of us and like one other somewhere. And then there were five Brits, a couple of Aussies, but the rest, like, you know, 98% of the crews were all Italians and Germans. So it's funny that when we got on, they were like, yo, over there. Why are they separating us? This is kind of creepy. Or like, God, I feel like, 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 you know, we're in another foreign country and like, you know, singling us out. You know, the bad people go over here and the good people go over here. Kind of scary, but, you know, it was because, you know, everyone else, the Italians, the Germans, they were part of the European Union. So they had, they had different boarding processes for all the people from the European Union. Um, but I don't know, I know why it was different from for us, from the United States, from Australia, um, uh, I'm not sure about the Brits, but that was the process. So we boarded the ship. Now, uh, our itinerary was uh, sailing out of the port of Savona, Italy, and then we went to um, Barcelona, Spain. Uh, gorgeous. I loved it. I would live there. Uh, then we went to... Uh, Canary Islands, we went to two of the Canary Islands, Tenerife, and I forgot the other one. Then we went to Portugal um, and Morocco, and then um, we flew out of Italy and then went to Paris, because I think our flight home was from Paris. Now, it was a traditional um, European cruise, I guess, like kind of like you see on TV, um, where you know you have a set dinner table. We ate every night at 5 p.m. at table number 109, and that was our table. And you dress for dinner. Okay, we were all in suits and ties. I think I brought with me about about three suits, maybe. I mean, I had more, but you know, you just bring so many suits. You know, dress shirts and different ties. And, um, you know, the women were all in dresses and gowns, you know, and everybody came all with their hair done up and the jewelry. And you know, it was a big to-do, eating dinner. So I remember we, um, we get to our first night on the ship at dinner, and we're trying to figure out in this giant dining room, where is table number 109? And it was kind of toward the back. So the four of us guys, we get there and seated already are five ladies, and they ended up being uh, the five British ladies, and they were our table mates for the duration of the entire two-week cruise. So we ate dinner with them every night, and I think I've got a picture of the five British ladies. Now, if I remember, uh, uh, one of them was Sheila, and then she had a daughter, like in her late 20s, early 30s. Her name was Jill. And then there was another lady named Sheila as well. And then there was Betty. And then there was Mary. And Mary was older, like 
in her like 75-ish. A lot of jewelry, a lot of diamonds, seemed to be the old rich one. I believe she had the suite, while the rest of them, uh, Sheila and her daughter Jill had a room, and then Betty and the other Sheila had a room, but Mary had a suite all by herself. And so um, it turned out, and I'm so happy to say, that they ended up being our best friends. We spent the entire two-week cruise with the five British ladies. We ate dinner with them every night. We ate lunch with them. We went on shore excursions with them. We played euchre and cards with them every day. Uh, we went shopping with them. We had the best time with our British ladies. In fact, um, we, got, we became so close with them that, you know, Jill, the, the young one, the daughter, um, was engaged to be married. And I believe she was marrying somebody from Scotland. And so the wedding was going to take place in Scotland, where he was from. But then a month or two later, they were going to have kind of another ceremony here in the United States in New York. And she invited all of us, uh, the four guys, me, uh, Bill, Tom, and Kevin, uh, to go to the wedding in New York. Um, I think the only one that was able to go was uh, Bill. He did attend her wedding, but that's how close we got. We had such a wonderful time. I'll never forget the two weeks in Europe with the British ladies. They were awesome. And, and uh, during the course of me uh, posting uh, on my Tales from the High Seas about my Costa Europa cruise, I will include as many photos that I had taken of uh, our friends, the Brits. So that's all I'm going to say right now. Uh, and I want you to join me uh, later for another episode of Tales from the High Seas as I go into part two of our two-week Mediterranean cruise aboard the Costa Europa. So I'll see you soon. Now remember, travel safe and cruise often. Bye-bye now. Ah, the memory. I thought I asked for a star on my dressing room door. Hmm. Who's got my Evian water? Hmm. I want compensation. I'm thirsty. Where's my union rep? This is very stressful. Let's go. I got filming to do. Get your knickers in a twist. Give your shirt on, grimy!